Hello, welcome back to another episode at Smith's Cell Farm. We're here in the mountains in Spain, building our little off-grid cabin. In the last few videos, you've seen us install the window, the door, put in the insulation and board out the walls of the cabin. So if you're new to our channel, go back and watch some of these videos where we've been doing these sorts of things. And always remember to like and subscribe. In this week's episode, what we're going to be doing is insulating the roof and then boiling that out. And that's the last step in making it weather tight. So I've just come back from my first permaculture experience. So this is where we're going to stop for today. We've done six panels. We've got the insulation in on this side, but we need to go down to the shop to go and buy a few more pieces of wood because we need to bridge the gap over here to be able to have something in this side to be able to screw into um, because the I-beam is actually behind the wall there. So we just need to go and get a few pieces of wood that we can put into that gap that we can then use to screw into but it's looking really good. So as some of you may have noticed, we put the walls on and then the ceiling. And now we've got an issue where we put the corners of the ceiling on, it's, it's kind of floating. And so it's not resting on anything or we can't screw it into anything. I had a look online and people suggest putting bracing straps and things like that. Um, unfortunately, I don't see how we're gonna put bracing straps across. So what we're gonna do is attach a piece of wood in that gap from the purling up to the top um, and then that will sit in that groove and then hopefully we can screw into that in the corners. Um, it looks like it's going to be the easiest way. While Danny is at the permaculture course today, what I'm going to start doing is some of the preparation inside the cabin. So what we want to do is uh, sand down these walls and make them kind of as smooth and flat as possible where we've got all these pieces that are kind of joining and connecting um, and, and just kind of get rid of any of those lumps and bumps where possible. Um, I'm going to be doing that because then we're going to be uh, priming and either painting or sealing uh, these different walls. Um, and so they need a good sand before we do that. But before I get on with that, it is an absolute tip in here. We've got um, bits of wood left over, we've got insulation, we've got bits of cork all over the place. Um, so I'm gonna give it a quick tidy up first before I start doing that to create more mess. Um, and hopefully it makes a little bit of an easier workspace. Well, that's this side looking a lot better. Um, we're just going to ignore this side for the moment. <laughs> um, I thought if I do half of it first and then I can kind of move things around because some of the stuff we need to keep in here, some of the wood and stuff, but it's looking much cleaner and uh, kind of easier to move around. So that's good. And I'm going to start by using this uh, P60 grit sandpaper. Um, hopefully this should be strong enough to get through some of this kind of tougher part where there's a little lip between two pieces and things like that. 
Um, so I'll probably start with this one first, try and get the majority of it down smooth. And then I've got um, two other sandpaper levels. So I just got um, kind of a kit that's got a few different grades in it. So we've got um, 60, 120 and 240. Um, we'll see how fine we need to go. It depends on what the surface is feeling like. Um, but I may have to go over it with all three. Let's see. I've probably been at this for maybe 45 minutes or so and it's not really working. The the lips on some of the the kind of overboards is quite big and it just can't it can't eat through that much material. Um in some places it's making it quite smooth or it's at least just kind of taking the edge off so it's not um not too sharp. But I don't know. I'm thinking Possibly two ideas. Either maybe try a stronger um, grit sandpaper, so maybe try and get something that's like a 20 or a 40, um, or perhaps a little bit of wood filler. But it's already lunchtime and I'm starting to get quite hungry, so I'm going to go back over, prepare a bit of lunch, have a little think, maybe try and do a bit of research online uh and see what's best to do we never thought that we were going to get these joints perfect um you know I, I don't think it's going to be possible for us to get these absolutely smooth um which is okay that's fine um but yeah i'm just trying to think about what's the best thing to kind of minimize it looking a little bit crappy um i'll have a think even though it's still cold and wintry and I've still got my thermal on underneath my jumper, you can start to see the little indications of spring finally on its way. Have you ever seen anything so sweet as these tiny, tiny little daffodils? We have them popping up all over the land and they are so cute. Has anybody else ever seen anything so tiny? I've never seen daffodils this small before. Maybe there's something different. Um, if you know, put it in the comments, let us know. Um, but they, they genuinely look like tiny, tiny little daffodils. They're so cute. Okay, so I had a little search whilst I was making some lunch and it looks like using wood filler is not going to be the best idea because wood filler is going to kind of fill those gaps, but actually you need little gaps between the OSB because it's going to expand and contract. Um, with the kind of moisture in the air and with the heat and things like that. So what I think I'm going to do is use the 60 grit that I've got to kind of go over the main part of the boards and just give those a once over um, and then go down to town and go and pick up maybe some 40 or 20 depending what I can get hold of and see if that does a better job. Um, I don't know, let's see. So I've just come back from my first permaculture experience. Um, I've read books and watched lots of YouTube, obviously, on permaculture, different techniques and things like that. But there is um, a permaculture site near where we live. She's about half an hour from us um, and she had an introductory to permaculture course, um, two and a half days, like Friday afternoon through to Sunday evening. So the course was at River Ebro Permaculture. 
and there was a woman called Peach who's been here for I think nearly 20 years so she knows the land really well and it's the same land as we've got it's the same mountain range um, so the soil is the same wind direction and things is coming generally from the same place that sort of thing so it was really interesting to listen to someone who's been here for such a long time and knows the the land with a permaculture frame of mind in what they've been doing the introductory course itself was just an introduction course to permaculture so we didn't go too deep into anything but kind of touched on several bases um talked about the 12 principles of permaculture talked about how uh, these principles can be applied into agriculture but also into your personal life that sort of thing and then we did other things where we we looked at layouts and then we introduced sun direction and wind direction this sort of thing um, and how the orientation of your land and uh, what you're building or trees that you're planting um, changes based on those aspects. She brought them in step by step and um, you did all of one thing and then she was, then she brought in a you know the joker and um, everything changed you're like oh well if the wind direction has now changed to this then everything's wrong we've got to move this here move that there. I'd say the two big things I took home was that don't disturb the soil that's already there. So our land's so unproductive that if you destroy the, the plant network that's already there, it makes it really difficult for things to come back. And then secondly, just that it's possible. Like she's been here, she's been doing it. Um, things are growing that I've, you know, I've not seen grow around here. And she's talking about doing different things that, you know, the local frame of mind um, of, you know, conventional agriculture doesn't think in the same way. Um, so it's really interesting to see um, how those principles of permaculture can be applied here. One of the big things I came back with as well was that nothing should have one purpose. Everything should be dual purpose, um, at least. She was talking about trying to reuse her water five times. Um, I didn't ask too many questions, but I thought it was a really interesting idea of you know, really looking into how um, you use your resources and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I would really recommend it. She's got, um, I think, a new course coming up in May. Uh, we'll leave a link to her website and Instagram uh, down in the description. So if you'd like to go along, give her a follow, give her a like, and then um, when she sends something out, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to know when that comes. Good morning. Uh, yesterday I went and bought some um, forty grit paper. So I'm going to give this sandpaper a go and see if that can take down uh, the little edges. Um, I don't have tons of time today, but I'm hoping that I might be able to get some of these edges sanded down. Um, again, not so they're completely flat, but just so that they're a bit better than they are now. And then hopefully next time we come down, we can finish the little bit of the roof that we've not done yet. Um, and then also maybe prime the inside. Um, so I'll see how far I get today. I've got a couple of other jobs that I want to get done as well. We bought a couple of trees that I want to pot on and there's a few little jobs that I just want to get done uh, around the land. So I'll see how far I get with this. But yeah, time's ticking. I've probably got about two or three hours maybe. This 40 grit sandpaper definitely seems to be working a lot better than a 60. So it's just taking this kind of lip off. Um, as I said, it's not going to be perfect, but it should just help to make that a little bit flatter, a little bit kind of smoother so that when we come to kind of paint it, we don't have like a big kind of two or three millimeter uh, gap in some places. There's quite a few places where it's just a little bit proud and, and wants to be taken down. I'm going to take a quick break from sanding because my arms feel like they're weirdly vibrating. Um, so I'm just going to have a little rest from that. Uh, but I thought whilst I was doing that, the best thing to do to spend the time is do something productive. 
So I'm going to put on a couple of tree seedlings that we bought recently. So we have three new trees and I'm going to pot them on first before we plant them out because we haven't quite decided exactly where we want to plant them yet. So we thought it was better that we put them on, help get them established, and then we can plant them when we know where we'd like to put them. So to put on the trees, I'm going to use uh, a couple of these terracotta pots that we've got. Um, we did put the air layered figs into these and one of them is doing absolutely fine. So this is new growth coming through and it's healthy. It looks good, but unfortunately the other two didn't survive. So this one here needs pulling out, but never mind. These things are experiments and they don't always work, um, but it's good to see that one has but we will use these pots for another purpose, that's fine. We bought three trees that we're going to be potting up. So we have the Castagna sativa, which is a chestnut. We have the Corylus aviana, which is a hazelnut. And we have the Fagus sylvatica, which is a beech nut tree. I'm actually just taking some of this uh, tree compost out of the pots because for some of these trees, they actually like kind of, you know, worse conditions to grow uh, and it encourages the root growth. So what I'm going to do is mix some of the kind of normal ground soil in with this tree compost and give it a really, really good soak first before I actually plant the trees. There's actually drainage in the bottom of each of these pots. So there's just some rocks in the bottom just so that they can't get sodden. Uh, and then hopefully that means that we can keep them well watered without them getting uh, root rot. Luckily, we have some wild boar that roam around on the land. And so there was an area that was already pretty well dug up. So I just took the soil from there. Uh, it means it's kind of more loose. Uh, there aren't as many rocks in it. It was easier to collect. Um, so just, yeah, work with nature when you can. Um, obviously, it's not ideal to have wild boar. Uh, they can cause quite a lot of destruction. But for the time being, We'll just uh, live in symbiosis. <laughs> Um, chestnut also likes quite acidic soil so I've gone and collected some pine needles from underneath one of the trees and I'm going to bury that into the soil as well. Um, pine needles and pine trees are very acidic and so uh, as we kind of see that break down in the soil it should add a little bit of acidity to the soil which hopefully the tree should like. Okay, so now I'm just going to give them a really good soak with water, leave them for a little bit, and then come back. Paco's enjoying this water too. <laughs> some more. I tried. Yeah. So the water's all soaked in. I've had a bit of lunch and now I'm going to plant the trees into each of these pots. I kept these wrapped in the um, cling film just whilst we were soaking them, just to make sure that they didn't completely disintegrate and just kind of dissolve all the soil uh, into the water. Make sure I get all those roots in there. 
put it pretty close to the bottom before it hits the rocks and then I'm going to top it up with some compost on top. Okay, so that's the chestnut done. That one's the beech nut. And then that means the last one is the hazelnut. While I'm on the subject of trees, I thought I'd just come and show you the lemon that we planted last year. Um, so this is doing quite well. It did get a little bit battered by the wind that comes through in this direction, uh, which is why we built this barrier, uh, but probably didn't build it high enough. Um, cause what happened was a lot of the top leaves were actually blown off, uh, last year after we planted it. Um, but sometimes that happens when the plant goes into shock, when you first transplant it from where it's been in its pot, uh, as a seedling into the ground. So we're not too worried about that um, because it's coming back nice and strong. You can see there are plenty of little buds coming and lots of new leaf growth as well. So hopefully a happy little healthy lemon plant. So we're going to start doing the floor and the reason we're putting another floor on top of the floor that's already here is because when we first started building this, all of the OSB that's down now kind of got a little bit weathered over time whilst we were building the frame and everything before we made it watertight. So there are a few boards that, you know, are a little bit kind of misaligned or have gone a little bit like soft in places. Um, and what we want to do is like, strengthen that as much as we can. So the boards that are going this way, we're going to overlap them with boards that are going in the opposite direction. Because of the sides of the boards, we need to make sure that we have kind of the midway point going down the centre so that we can disperse the load as much as we can between the two boards. Because if we were to just put this one board here and then fill the gap, it's going to be really kind of aligned with the one that's underneath and it's not actually going to strengthen it at all. So it means we're going to have to cut kind of every single board to be able to fit in, but we think it's going to give us the best strength. this now and there's just a little bit by the door to do so to make sure that we're getting it underneath the edge here we're actually going to cut these pieces before we screw these ones in um, because then we can kind of jiggle them around and get them all right before we then screw in the last four pieces so we're just making these little strips there's a little bit of a kind of cut out that we need to do here where it just goes around the little door frame that we put in um, so we're just working out those angles cut those pieces and then hopefully that's the floor done
phone is <laughs> so dusty. <laughs> Has to be better. Um, so I think I've probably done about two and a half hours of sanding. <laughs> uh, just a little bit. And I'm hot and sweaty, as you can see. Um, but it's starting to look a lot, lot better. And I think this is probably good enough for us to be able to do the uh, priming and painting. Um, as we've said before, this cabin isn't going to be absolutely perfect. This is a way for us to learn new skills and for us to be able to get more confident with building before we actually start on the build um, of the big house, the, the stone house. So yeah, we, you can obviously see on the walls um, where I've done across all of the kind of joints. Um, I'm not too bothered about doing more on on this kind of main face. They're relatively smooth anyway. And as I said, we're gonna prime and paint these anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I think that's probably where I'll leave it for this one. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the progress on the cabin. Um, slowly, slowly, we're getting there. Um, you know, this isn't a sprint. <laughs> um, let's call it a marathon, it feels like it but it's really starting to feel like we're getting somewhere now. And hopefully over the next few videos, what we're going to start on is the interior of the cabin. So we've already got a design in mind and we're going to be kind of measuring all of that out uh, and actually starting on the build of the inside of the cabin. So that will be the kitchen, that will be the um, the platform, um, kind of all of the you know electrics and water and, and all of that kind of good stuff. So if you're not already subscribed to our channel, then please do consider doing so. It really helps the channel to grow and hopefully there are lots of like-minded people out there who are enjoying our content and would like to watch more of it. So if you've enjoyed the video, please also give it a big thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one.